I think that um, a number of um, Chinese workers have had to uh, become used to working at home or working wherever they are. Um, and, you know, we know that businesses themselves have had to adjust as well. Uh, in China, with a really traditional type of work culture, uh, many businesses had to um, shut down uh, in terms of their physical space and allow the workers to work from home. So at this point, about 51% of um, businesses in China say that they have a flexible workspace. So that can mean working fewer hours or different hours, um, working from home at different times, and so on. Well, talk to us more about work culture in China pre-pandemic compared to other parts of the world. And do you think these pandemic changes are going to last, be here for a while, maybe last for the long term? It seems like some of them may remain intact. Um, definitely, there will be a little bit more flexibility, although in China, the workplace um, is much more traditional than in other countries. Um, some people in other countries, um, as was mentioned, Canada, um, and um, uh, other places. Uh, we know that people already work from home even before the pandemic. In China, this was not really common at all. Uh, China has more of a top-down hierarchical workplace where um, the bosses want to see the workers um, performing their task on site. Um, but this has all changed with the pandemic. And now um, I think that many employers have realized that workers are actually staying on task when they work from home which they might have thought, you know, would be a problem before the pandemic hit. But it's um, been shown that many workers are even more productive at home. Right. Longer hours, uh, typically in China, even longer days of the week, six, seven days sometimes in a row without a, a break, and then you get a larger break maybe. Um, so that's the big debate, right? Working remotely and then the productivity part of it. Some say uh, more people are working even more hours than they were when they were reporting to the office in person. So what do you say about that? Yeah, you know, there are studies that have shown different results, some that show that people are more productive, some that show that people are less productive. But I think it really comes down to the kind of person. Um, some people really like to work in teams and they're more productive when they're working with other people. And some people like to work alone. Um, so it depends on the person. But in terms of more work, I think in particular, women have found it difficult because uh, when they're working from home, they're um, also doing housework and taking care of the children. Um, and, and so it, you know, creates sort of this double burden for women again. Um, but I think that, you know, having more flexibility all in all is relatively a good thing. Well, talking about that flexibility a little bit more, um, how have these adjustments impacted work-life balance? Maybe if you look and take away some of the housework and, and the child rearing that you mentioned. I mean, is there a little bit more work-life balance? Is there a little bit more social balance? What does this mean culturally for China? Well, I think that, you know, given the lockdowns, people became even more dependent on their um, WeChat accounts to stay in touch with uh, friends and coworkers and so on. And so that has like further um, ingrained um, in the culture that, you know, WeChat is really um, a critical part of networking socially. Um, I think, you know, after the pandemic really hit China and there was a lockdown, China seemed to get out of that relatively rapidly. So people were engaging in social life again um, on physical terms, um, but they were also tending to wear masks more in public, also wash their hands and um, sanitize their hands more, probably more than we see in the West. Um, and so they have really learned to adapt very quickly to um, a new life uh, post-COVID.